Albert Einstein and Winston Churchill and C.S. Lewis and some of the most brilliant people of all time were horrible students. And some people said that, that like Albert Einstein and Thomas Edison uh, had, had the inability to learn. Mm. And it wasn't because they were stupid. Right. It was because they were genius. And sometimes geniuses just don't do well on tests. Right. You talked about the um, the system and living up to these standards. Um, are you going to talk about being behind? I'm assuming you're going to get to that because I know that's a big thing where moms are like, oh, my kids are behind. What do I do? Yeah, uh, I hear that all the time. My child's behind and, and I'm like, behind who? Right. Um, who are they racing, right? You know, is this a race and your child is is not catching up to the child in front of them? And so, you know, I, I would say another one of the mistakes that parents make is the myth of, of the necessity of standardization. Mm -hmm. uh, the government school is predicated on that. And there are reasons why the government school has to have standardization for them to be who they are, right. do what they do and accomplish their purposes and their agenda. But for us as parents, um, this concept of standardization is, is very fallacious and not helpful. Um, I have 11 children and not one of my children uh, so far is standardized. They are all completely unique, uh -huh. completely different from each other. They have different learning styles. They have different interests, different personalities. Uh, and so, you know, God didn't make them all the same. And yet the government school says that you have a 10 year old. And so they are in fifth grade. And mm -hmm. so they need to learn these things at this age. Uh, it's a very arbitrary type uh, program. And then, the, and then we test them, of course, to make sure that all the children are standardized. And then we grade them on that. And the biggest problem that I have, like with standardized testing, for example, is how, whether parents and educators mean to do this or not, uh, it is the net result of it. But a child's entire se sense of self-worth is predicated on their performance on the standardized test. Mm -hmm. If they score high on the test, then they are a valuable human being. And right. if they don't, then they're a failure and that they will never amount to anything in life. And, and even the issue of grades, you know, fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, I believe are completely arbitrary uh, and really unnecessary. Um, so like uh, the example I use for people who, you know, still have the public school mindset, they can't get, get their mind around that idea is, uh, you know, I have a son who is 13 years old. Um, he's doing like 11th grade math. He's doing like ninth grade science. I think he's doing fifth grade English, uh, probably like sixth grade history. So what grade is he? Right. <laughs> you know, and of course, what people do immediately is they think, oh, he's this age. Well, that corresponds to maybe seventh grade. Well, uh -huh. he's not doing seventh grade anything, basically. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so what grade is he in? Yeah. So so it's really very arbitrary. And, and sometimes I'll also say, you know, let's say that you and I got hired to work for a company and we're computer programmers and somebody says, okay, you, you need to take this class. Uh, what level should we start you in? Um, you know, I would be in the preschool <laughs> level <laughs> Me too. for computer programming. So we're sitting here in preschool kindergarten class, right? Does that make us preschoolers? Does that make us kindergartners? No, it just means we haven't learned that yet. Right. So, so in one sense, the, the concept of levels kind of makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. Not so much grades, right. but levels. And some of the homeschool curriculum publishers who actually create curriculum for homeschoolers, mm -hmm. they don't use the term grades. They actually do use levels because it builds sequentially mm -hmm. uh, as a knowledge base. So, you know, a year from now, if you and I work at this company, we might be in fourth grade programming, right? Yeah. <laughs> but that doesn't define who we are. We're not fourth graders. We just don't know the, the next material yet, right? right? So there can be value in us, you know, having levels so we know what stage or what level we're moving into. Uh, but, but in terms of this, you're in sixth grade, almost no student learns that way. Right. Almost no stu student is always at grade level in all of these subjects, nor should they be. Right. Uh, because we're all different and we learn differently. And then back to standardized testing. Um, standardized testing, uh, well, let me just say this, testing a child can be helpful in that as parents, we want to know, did they learn the material? Did they comprehend it? 
did they retain it? Mm -hmm. And do they have the ability and capacity to be able to uh, repeat it or communicate it to somebody else? Right. And so testing can be helpful in that respect. So we've, let's say we've studied something on the Middle Ages and we test them to find out, did you learn the material that you studied? Do you know the material? Can you communicate effectively what you learned? Testing can be helpful in that respect. But I think this concept of, of them measuring themselves among their peers and deriving their self-worth from that or parents assigning or ascribing their self-worth to the child based on that, I think is hugely detrimental. Yeah. And the scripture even speaks to it, where the Apostle Paul says, comparing ourselves among ourselves, we are unwise. Mm, wow. And that's really what standardized testing does, is yeah. it compares us among ourselves and then says, well, your worth or your value is, is this right. based on where you score and, and what percentage points you got. And yeah. you know, even, even taking tests, um, I, I use this illustration a lot when I talk to people about this, that Albert Einstein and Winston Churchill and C.S. Lewis and some of the most brilliant people of all time were horrible students. And some people said that, that like Albert Einstein and Thomas Edison uh, had, had the inability to learn. Mm. They, they believed that they were completely, uh, you know, un that they were, teachers believed that they couldn't be taught. And it wasn't because they were stupid. Right. It was because they were genius. And sometimes geniuses just don't do well on tests. Right. And there are other people who are great test takers. But practically, you know, if you hired them, you would fire them because right. <laughs> they can't apply that to something productive in the real world. Yeah. And so, so it's really, you know, the fact that somebody has good grades and somebody has bad grades doesn't really even tell us a lot about intelligence. It doesn't even really tell us a lot about whether somebody's smart or not, capable right. or not. It's what it tells us, what it teaches us is that some people are really good at taking tests uh -huh. and some people are not good at taking tests. Yeah. And, and maybe that's helpful information in the real world, but for the most part, it's not. And I, I think as parents, we have to just, again, kind of deconstruct our, our government school paradigm mm. and realize that education and schooling are completely and totally different from each other. Homeschool Insights is sponsored by CTC Math. If you're looking for a great online math program, visit ctcmath.com and try it for free. For more great homeschool inspiration and resources, listen to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast every Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday.